What's up, everybody? Cedric here, CR Wrestling Commentary, and I'll be reviewing Friday Night Smackdown ish. Um, so, as you know, I only review the things that I like because everything else I'm going to skip. So, <clears throat> they show Reigns and Rhodes meeting in the center of a football field on, on mutual turf, and the site of the next big event they call Bad Blood. I still think that was a WCW event. Um, well, they, they own it, so yeah, this is a WWE event. Then, the line that kind of killed it a good bit for me was, find out what they had to say, and I'm like, oh man, come on. So, you know, it kind of lets you know they're, they're going to be okay with each other, or at least okay enough. That, that's what it does. That's why it kills it for me a bit. You know it's not going to be any true animosity, but there's going to be tension. Um, so then next they show the henchmen of the bloodline passing through a checkpoint, and it directly reflects their levels of uh, ranging from okay to crazy. This was short and hilarious as their belts and other apparel activated the senses for a pat down. So the first through was Loa, who was smiling as if he was going to the best party on the planet, fully rejecting the pat down. Second was Tonga, who stopped the pat down at his knees like, uh, no, 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 no. And the right hand man is second in command. So that's how that worked. Finally, Fatu comes through. And after a quick pat down, it was really quick, really like, he's like, you're good. And, you know, he already took the shades off. I was like, this ain't going to be good. And then he just beat the hell out of all the, the job of security. And then at the end, he shouts, anybody else want to pat down? I laughed my ass off on that one. I was, I was like, yep. Yeah. I had to, uh, and Cedra's at work, so I had to call her up to let her see it, and she thought that was funny too. I mean, it wasn't a comedy skit, but to me, I could, I could see the comedy in it. Uh, so then we get a U.S. title match: L.A. Knight, who came out first for some reason, versus the challenger Andrade, who came out in the champion's place. I, I, I don't know. I don't know why they do this. Um, Andrade was announced at the weight of, and this is a, this is the, the 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 ring announcer. It's a flub, but when I first heard it, it was thirteen hundred thirty pounds. I was like, "That's a massive dude." <laughs> but then I called CJ and I said, "Did you hear this?" And he, she says, "What thirteen? Like." At 3,230 pounds, <laughs> it's like he, she flubbed. I get it. I've done many ring announcements, CR Fire Pro, and I get it. I have flubbed, flubbed, flubbed. I have called the wrong name. I have called the wrong weight. I have called the wrong person. So, yeah, it was just a little fun for me to hear it, though. Like, I'm not the only one. So, at this juncture, I'm waiting for Hayes to run in and Make this a three-way of bad blood where Knight beats him to retain and be done with both of these guys. That, that, was, that was my little short two cents on it. WWE so far has not failed to actually impress me thus far. And it's not what you think. So Andrade, you know, he hit his diving moonsault, standing moonsault for a two count. And then hit the corner of Meteora for a two count. And see, doing those moves and going for pins, that's just intelligent. That's just smart. Knight fights back with a, a counter over the shoulder power slam, but he didn't go for the pin. I, I didn't like that too much, but then again, you know, it kind of barely did anything. You know, not, not the move, but him. So, you know, it's not a one hit and quit. You can't do that with a, with a contender. So, I get it. Um, he hit the middle rope, double jump, diving elbow drop. I really thought he would go for it then, but he didn't. Um, Andrade hit the spinning back elbow for a two count, and the fans were not happy with the ref for that. They were not happy. And you can see the ref kind of shrug it off like, ah, you know, I'm doing my job, man. <laughs> uh, you can see the two jock for position, uh, missed moves, fighting back until Knight hit the BFT for a three count. And, you know, Hayes didn't show up. I was happy with that. Like I said, 
WWE has not failed to impress me. They aren't. Back in the day, all of these predictions would have been so spot on. You'd be like, why do I watch this? As soon as you see the matchup, you knew how it was all going to go down. And there's nothing wrong with some predictability. But when it's all predictability, that's when I stopped watching. I just didn't care anymore. Uh, and after the match, Knight goes for a fist bump. Andrade rather shake. So with neither giving an inch, Andrade takes Knight's hand and raises it. You know, it was that was a real super cheap way to get the last word in. You know, but it was also while saying good match. You know, congratulate this guy. He was a star. I did my part. And I thought, look, I thought the match was damn good, to be honest with you. I thought it was a real good match. Both of them showed up. Both of them performed. It was great. It was it was a crunched match to an extent, but it was really good. And it kind of frustrates me work-wise, these guys should be main eventing, or at least close to it. They, sh they shouldn't be king of the mid-card. They really shouldn't. In the back, Hayes has to run his mouth on Andrade, who had nothing to say. It just started throwing hands, and it was a scrap, and it had to get broke up. And honestly, it looked, it looked legit. I've seen fights go down like that, real life in front of me. I've seen that stuff. So that's, hey, you know, you, I mean, that's good. They did great, perfect, good job. Because I was like, oh, they fighting. They really fighting. Um, they, they, they did good. So here we go. It's Cody and Roman. So, and I think they had way too much production just for a conversation. But I admit, it got the feels going a bit, put you in the, in, the, in the area with them. And it does have that, it gives you the music and the, I don't know how many hours it took for them to do this, but the multiple Michael Bay shots of them. <laughs> I'm like, why does Roman have a motorcade? And I like that Cody called it out. I think he said like seven cars, is that it? You know? <laughs> um, so Roman and Rose do a sparring match on who gave the most to Atlanta, Georgia, with Rhodes winning since it was, you know, a person being Roman versus a family selling seats and sacrificing everything every single day of the week. Ro Roman conceded and wisely before cutting to the chase. So Roman's like, that was good. <laughs> um and he says Rhodes is in a lose-lose situation. And I'm like, yeah, Rhodes getting nothing out of this. He, he doesn't. And what if he, let's just kayfabe it, okay? Let's, let's just throw, thorough kayfabe. So, speaking as a fan, watching this, Cody goes into this and he's the champion. And he's going against Roman Reigns, who does not like him against Solo Sikoa and the rest of the bloodline that hate him. You've got two sides that don't like him and he could get injured. They could injure. It could be a ploy. It could be an easy ploy that Roman never stopped being leader because I remember Solo Sikoa saying he, he, he is the leader. When he comes back, that's what it's going to be. He's going to be in charge. So what if they go to bad blood? They do this thing. And then Reigns turn on him, beating on him. Well, I can't say turn on him because he's not on his side. But beat him down. And then Solo and them was like, yeah, you're the tribal chief. Here's the Ulafala, yada, yada. And they beat down Cody, injure him. And then the next event, Survivor Series, Cody's still too banged up. And Roman can just go in and walk out with the belt like nothing happened. Just saying, that's, from a fan's point of view, that's keeping the kayfabe going like that. Kayfabe for the fan. So, okay, we end that. So, okay, so, and I'm like, okay, so he's in a lose-lose situation. I was like, okay, he's got the belt. He's got nothing to gain. 
it's not even necessarily revenge. It's like, okay, you just want to get your lit back, jump him in the back, bowl him over into a wall, and be like, ah, I got you, and walk off. You know, that's all he got to do. Or don't retaliate and just say, didn't I tell you that you weren't ready? Now you got to deal with him. I'm out of this. And move on. Last word, Roman's left to the dust. He's going to get a two-on-one with Solo and Jacob. And there you go. And Rose ain't got nothing to do with it. That's what could have happened. Anyway. So, ah, Roman points out that Rose has everything to lose dealing with people who have nothing to lose. Rose has health, reputation, and the undisputed heavyweight belt. Roman says he lost Jimmy Uso. No mention of Jay. He lost his wise man, Paul Heyman. He lost the bloodline and the Ulafala. Roman has nothing else to lose. And for the first time in a long time, he has no weight on his neck. He says, you know, look, I can't recall the movie or actual quote, but he says he's a man with no country. And I was like, I have heard that before. So yeah, anyway, Cody reminds him that he foretold him that Roman or foretold to him that Roman would stand a chief without a tribe. And that's exactly what has happened. OK. But does he not? See, if Roman wanted to be that super baby face, he could have been like, I'm the tribal chief and my tribe are the millions of people out there. And he could easily say the millions and millions of people out there in his own way. And doing something like that could sort of trigger the rock to come back, you know, the final boss, which would be a, new, a good new moniker of him. Um, and the rock could start wearing his expensive, uh, you know, tropical type clothing. So Cody repeats to Roman, onto Roman what had already been laid out. But then he adds that he's not long, he, he's not long to be the big wig champion and leader. He's simply the man they call Roman Reigns. And I'm like, okay, it's kind of a small pep talk, kind of. Roman becomes visibly annoyed and asks an important question. What do you want? And Cody simply wants his word that he can count on him to have his back so that Cody can have his back. Roman gives his word and says that when it's all done, he's taking back what, you know, belongs to him. And he's looking at Cody's belt. Roman tries to walk away and Cody steps up to block him and remind him this is not yours to take and I was like whoa I like I gotta admit I, I did like the camera angle Cody's expression Cody's delivery that was a chef's kiss I'll get to that later Roman Roman remarks that he's in his way Cody steps back Roman takes a step forward you're in the way of my life I'm like, oh, snap. He says, well, you're in my way in, in life. And I'm just, you know, so as the video ends, Kevin stands watching and Byron asks him if he's got any thoughts. Kevin just walks away. So my, my, my note thing about this one, uh, this was a great way to show a few heel parameters of Cody. And I think he'd make a great heel. But Roman, at best, would make a temporary great baby face. I say temporary because some things have a short life because some people start missing certain ways. I would say Roman has reached a possible legendary status when he can be a heel or baby face and be believable as that disposition, whichever one he's going to be. Cody could mainstay a heel and it would retain for the rest of his career with no issues. That's how I see it at this moment. A year later, I might see different depending upon how they are presented. Because presentation, you can lose some steps. It, it, it can happen. So that's what I was talking about when I was like, camera shot, what Cody did. I was like, that, 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 that could be a good heel. I was like, man. And not to keep those shots every time, but Cody is far more believable doing that than he is trying to speak as a baby face. Um, I mean, he is the American nightmare. I mean, what? Uh, 
So we get a return match, Apollo Crews versus Giovanni Vinci. And last time, Cruz beat him in three seconds as Vinci nitoed his way out of his warm-up gear. This time, Vinci comes out ready to wrestle. And look, I wish I was in the shape that Giovanni is. I really do. Because I'm just the opposite. But when I see him, I see the blank canvas of an edit wrestler. That's what I see. And I'm like, at best, you'll be upper opening to lower mid card. That's what I see. Um, I don't know physically appearance what he's missing, but I don't know. Some people, there's that, usually it's just a tiny something. And then it's like, there you go. Now you look, now you're perfect. Um, Vinci did well with his aggression, and I enjoyed the multiple body slams in the ropes, making Cruz's leg bounce off of it to cause knee damage. I liked that. I thought that was good. Back in the day, that was seen as a botch, a mistake, you know, and they would get chastised for something like that. But this, I like how controlled it was. Vinci did very well. I like that. And I'm, like, just waiting for him to, you know, pin Cruz and make it one and one but then Cruz rolls him up and gets the three count win I was like okay I was like this dude's return is not looking very well Vinci attacks the alien Cruz and ends the whole beat down with a brain buster and it was a nice brain buster so I'm like I guess that's your finisher but I'm like how can I say why couldn't you just do that in the beginning when you had all that aggression and that's what a lot of the fans would, would think and see, like, why didn't you just do that when you had all that aggression and momentum in, in the ring? Then you could have brain busted him and beat him. So I'm not really happy with the beat down afterwards because it makes the match look weak. And it made Cruz look phony a little bit when Cruz should be looking like a million bucks. Um... So then Byron tries to get a word with Kevin who says, yeah, might as well talk about it on the ring. And that's just, I just love that about Kevin Owens. He just, it's like so commonsensical of what he does and whatnot so far. Um, then they advertise Saturday night's main event. They've been doing it the whole show uh, for December 14th using a rendition of the original theme. So it was pretty cool. My thoughts on what, what they're going to do for Saturday night's main event. You know, Saturday night's main event usually showcased your top stars only your top stars against their rivals and it's usually a very short unimportant looking match just something to hold over and push the narrative just a little bit just to say this is still a thing so i don't know what they're going to do now and they run it on a saturday um it's i mean it's a nice main event i've seen it on a friday so don't mm -mm. <laughs> I seen it on a Friday, um, but it's going to run against, I mean, I, I know what they're doing. I know what they're doing. And, you know, this is like, look, I'm, I'm going to put my junk here on this table and show AEW how to draw numbers on a Saturday. That's all they're doing. They're doing it just to do it. They got nothing else to do. They bored. Let's just do something to mess with them. And that, that's it. So, Okay. Uh, Kevin Owens stands in the ring and just as he's about to talk about how he feels about Cody and Roman teaming up, Bloodline enters. Tom is on the mic and he says Roman and Cody will, well he says Roman and Cody will get what's coming to them. Kevin will get his by the order of the Tribal Chief. Kevin just cut to the chase and the fight begins. They beat down Owens. Uh, DIY, they run in and the fight is even with the faces winning the battle. Nick Aldis and security come to uh, hold up. Whew, had to cough. Same drill, I'm still sick. Um, let's see. Um, all this makes a six man tag team match after um, security make a blockade and stuff separating the two teams. And then later, a match, Jax was pinned, and uh, this was the uh, women's tornado match. So Jax was pinned, 
via Crucifix, via Bailey, and Jackknife by Naomi. So, and I wrote, so it'll be a three-way that Nia wins by pinning Naomi. And I said, it'd be nice if the match was waived due to Jax and Naomi being in the ropes, or if Bailey and Naomi face off with Bailey winning and then being defeated by Jax. So next week, Andrade and Carmelo, six, six, six. Might be worth watching, though. See, the fight earlier it makes you say, okay, when they meet next week, it's going to be something. That, that's usually how that go. Um, and it should be a beatdown, a fight, a, a legit fight. Screw the wrestling. It should be a fight, and the referee got to throw it out. That's what should happen. That match should be no more than a minute and 30 seconds. And then you got, and, and that's what it should do. Um, and then, yep, all this makes them fight. Bailey will face Jackson lose. That's it. Naomi and Bailey will do battle. Bailey will win. Jax will, Jax will beat Bailey. And if it's the reverse, if Naomi beats Bailey some magical way, then Jax will beat Naomi. That's just how that goes. So then we get to the six man tag team match. Kevin Owens, DIY versus the Bloodline. Backstage, the Bloodline takes out DIY with Tama calling the shots. Jacob does a, a sprinting hip attack into Ciampa against a luggage trunk. The trunk and Jacob flip over from the impact before Tama leads them to the ring. And I was that was just crazy. Because it was like, Jake, get him, Jacob. And he run and I was like, oh, and there's a bunch of yelling. And, and CJ was like, okay, it just sounded like pandemonium up here. And I was like, oh, you got to see this. <laughs> like I said, she at work. Owen stands in the ring looking at this, and he's like, yeah. It, you can see his, his face says, yeah, typical. And then uh, one of the Michael Cole says roughly the same -ish thing. Um, <laughs> we're all Michael Cole. So... Um, Kevin, the fighting man he is, meets the bloodline and gets busy at the entrance. They throw Kevin to the ring, music hits, Street Profits run in, and note, I forgot about them, and I have no clue as to why. They've been presented each week. They deal with the bloodline. I have no idea why I forgot about the Street Profits. I forgot. I don't even know why. That's my bad. I, feel, I, I actually feel a bit bad. Forgetting about them because they, I, I like both of them. I can see them as singles and staying as a tag team. Um, you know what? Hold up. I'm not even going to pause it for this. Let me go ahead. I got to turn this fan off. Okay. Honestly, it's on OBS Studio, so I can't pause it. So, you know, that's just how that roll, right? So... Um, outside they, they, they form a pile and always dive onto everyone with Street Profits somehow not taking any damage returning from the break they the, the faces they got control of the match I'm, I'm, it's not blow by blow but I could not help but write I could, I could not help it um, returning from the break the faces got control of the match on Loa they beat on Loa who needed a tag as the fans chant OTC I still find it funny to say over the counter, though. I know it's original travel cheap, but still. Montez Ford does, Ford does a great Senton Atomico and, or Slingshot Senton. Um, and it was very high angle, and it had a ton of hang time. I was like, this dude just paused in midair. What in the world? Lowe gets the upper hand, tags in Jacob to a cheer from the fans that had to remember to hate him. Cause he got tagged, yay! Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> I was like, "You like Jacob?" <laughs> uh, I, was, I had to, I had to break a little silly on that one. But um, soon Tomatonga he gets in and he does the slingshot senton, what Ford did, but in his own quick style. He got up and got a little heat from the crowd, mocking and taunting and whatnot. I was like, "Yep." That, that Cedra looked at it. She was like, yeah, that's Tama being Tama. I was like, yeah, exactly. Tama, I'm, I got to say this. Tama's going to have to work on his WWE promos. Because instead of the swearing and stuff that he would normally do, he's got to repeat certain things. So 
<laughs> he's got he's got to find a new verbal repertoire. <laughs> oh, poor Tabatanga. Um, Jacob, he got in and after a flying forearm, he just smashed Dawkins in the corner, missed the hip attack. Shook, he, look, look, he missed the hip attack, shook the ring and rattled the metal. You could hear it. I was like, what in the world? I'm like, you don't need to hit it that hard, bro. You, you know, you might, you might want to use your back later in, in life, like tomorrow. Um, Dawkins got in. No, 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 who was he? No, that was, that was for, no, no, nope, that was Dawkins. Back and forth, Dawkins got in and got some work done on 5-2 before a thrust kick stopped him. Yeah, I'm, like I said, I'm skipping. I'm skipping through stuff. Um, 5-2 hit the BME just to do it. No pin attempt. Not happy with that, but I get the match must go on because it was still early. There was a lot of time left. Dawkins takes a beating. Jacob gets the tag, stops him uh, from making the tag. Dawkins evades Jacob, makes the Hot tag for Ford. Ford was on fire with Tamatanga, who made him look like a million bucks, although that was 50-50. You know, but I don't know what's going on. I can hear the floor refrigerator, I mean, floor freezer cut out, and then my screen goes black, so I got to pause for it to come back on. But Ford knows what he's doing. Tonga knows what he's doing, but not so much together as the backflip that Ford had to do that to set up took a, a smidge too long it took literally one second too long but they they couldn't flow into it um but the fans still popped for it I guess that's what's important I suppose I don't know uh too much about how people feel really but uh Owens he he got in he got his stuff in looked really good doing it Owens hit the swan time for a saved two count by Jacob Dawkins clears the ring uh, of Jacob's influence. Tama tries to superplex Owens, and everybody up on the yeah we all know don't 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 try that because Owens he fought back. He did a 180 superplex on Tonga for a save two count by Loa. The fans are chanting, "This is awesome!" because it is up there. It is good. It is flowing. Everyone is cooking on all cylinders. Owens gets the stunner on Tom uh, on Tonga for a save two count by Loa. The match is. Thrown out, it seems, as Street Profits take to the air on the bloodline. Ford gets the arena behind him on the on the table. Jacob knocks down Ford, throws Dawkins over the barricade. The bloodline prepared to finish Owens off, but he fights back before being shut down. Jacob hits the superfly splash on Dawkins. Owens is still fighting back, but they prepare to power bomb him. Uh, they they prepare to power bomb Owens through the table and DIY run in all beat up trying to fight the bloodline, but Jacob shuts that down. Owen still fights back, but they beat him down with Jacob calling the shots at this moment. Cody's music hit, and they turn in, and he runs in with a chair. Jacob kicks it from him and then takes the ace crusher, rolls out the ring like nothing really happened because, it, you know, it's he shouldn't sell that anyway. That's, that's, that's Jacob. That's his, his, his thing. Owen's got a chair, and from behind Cody, he just... And, you know, he, and it looks like he's going to lay him out. Cody turns around, sees it, and Owen drops the chair. Owens and you know he had ample time to blast Cody. You know, after three seconds of uh, of no action, you you knew he wouldn't. But he's back there, and the fans is kind of like, "Yay! Look out! Yay! Yay! Cody, look, look out!" <laughs> and and it's a mixture because you can hear that, and you can hear, "Yay! No! Yay! No! You can." <laughs> It's dual cheers with look out and no. You can <laughs> I was like, y'all are really into this. And, um, you know, they hug and how can I say this? Owens looked like he's being drained of life. And Cody looks like, who have I married? <laughs> so that's going to do it for SmackDown. This has been Cedric for CR Wrestling Commentary on Friday Night SmackDown ish and with that i want y'all to be cool be chill be safe so i can see you next time